This is storage room number 20. That is where my band, The Whereabouts, recorded hard and soft. And right across from us here is Andy's studio. Turn it up. Rockpreneur YouTube channel. Welcome to the first ever studio tours. Today we're here at Andy's studio and we're gonna check it out. Here it is. This is Andy. Hello. Here we have Andy's friggin' awesome drum set here. We literally have a kick drum hanging from the ceiling, two of them. I guess he's <laughs> trying to figure out something. What's what's going on, Andy? Oh, we're just getting stuff out of the way to put the PA on a stand. So would you say you're not super prepared for a professional studio <laughs> tour? <laughs> I would say that's a good assessment. Yes, I would agree with that. Look at this drum set. Everything kind of fell the other day when your old stepladder collapsed here. Oh, blame it on me. Yep. <laughs> Mixing board here. This was the... Biggest one I could find. It's so, powered. That, that's why I like it. Oh, oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you can run passive speakers. Yep, we've got you know those two running there on one channel, and those two there running on one channel. The mm. JBL is up here, I think now, and <laughs> that's kind of a monitor for me. And then I have a, a powered monitor out there that I'll use it for a vocalist if they come in here. Okay. We're going to put this thing on this tray. Interface, PA, and MacBook will be at my right hand. So this is more like a studio in progress here. Uh, it's ever in progress, Chris. I'm always adding new stuff, and that's why I never get anything done recording-wise. It's been a very fun, very uh, <laughs> enlightening project. It's just kind of thrown together still, as you can see when you look at the walls. But there's definitely a lot of frequency absorbing and deflecting material in here. You can really tell that the uh, sound is deadened back there. You can hear the sound being deadened back there. <laughs> you can tell by the way the cymbals sound in the room that the uh, that it's effective the way the room is treated. It might be a little excessive and <laughs> not planned <laughs> properly, but it's, it's working pretty good. I think. It's really more of a rehearsal room than a recording studio, but you can definitely record everything you do in here. Basically, I built this riser and a lot of wall treatments with two crates, one large, one small. The wall treatments are more from the small one. Like this is a, a wall treatment here that I made with old wine shippers, like those on the wall there. Yeah. And some floor insulation. You can see the principle at work there. That's obviously just for high frequencies. But I like the airspace that it creates behind there too when I have a, another hard surface behind there. There's an 18 inch Harbinger sub under this riser. And uh, yeah, that's what you heard there. So how many symbols in total do you have? I don't count them. I'll bet it's in the double digits though. I would say around enough. Look at all them beautiful symbols. This one's broken, but the splash, that's, uh, that's all right. It'll that's, still that's make a two sound. two broken splashes on top of one another. Okay. There you go. Flash. If you don't have one functioning one, you can use two non-functioning ones to make a functioning one. They sound like a piece of trash when you hit it, but it's kind of a hot piece of trash. Look at all them bar symbols. Hey, brother. <laughs> so what kind of mic setup have you got up here? That is, uh, they're all Sterling. There's a Sterling ribbon. I believe it's an ST170. That's a vocal mic, a cheap, it's you know, I came with the PA, but that's so I can, talk to whoever I'm jamming with. There's two condensers up there as well as the ribbon. Uh, the condensers are, wow, I think I remember all the model names, ST6050, maybe not ST, but they're 6050s from Sterling. Okay. And they're ocean ways, they're called. They're they, like pointed at different directions, so you get a stereo sound. Yeah, large body condensers, and one's pointed basically as close to the ride as I can get it, and the other at the hi-hat. So you don't have a resonant head on your kick, and you've put the mic inside the drum, pointed right where the batters 
are hitting the batter Pretty head. Much. That's yeah, that's my objective to see if I can get any of that high frequency pop of the the beater hitting the head. For recording purposes, I'll bet it works pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, that thing sounds damn good right now. Well, it sounds pretty good in your recording. So Andy has a YouTube channel, The Animal? Yes, sir. The Animal. And you can check out his drums and the sound he gets on his YouTube channel. So Andy here has a beautiful little unit here, the Roland Studio Capture, the same one I have in my studios. How do you like that unit? You steered me right when you told me to check this thing out. The Level sense is outstanding. You basically do a little sound check of your own while it auto sense, excuse me, auto sense technology is what automatically sets the, the gain level for the, each mic. And uh, that's really useful for a drummer. I just did this a while ago and I don't want to do all the mics again. Oh yeah, I got it, Chris. Oh, all right. Uh oh, it fell. Oh. <laughs> The studio capture just fell? Yep. Oh, geez. It fell on a pad. Well, that's good. I want a, a full band to be able to come in and record live, of course. The MacBook Pro Control Center. Pretty standard for these kind of studios. You, sometimes you see a PC, but not too often. <laughs> okay, it's on. It's on there. All right. I'm going to give her the crank. Go ahead. It's on. Sorry. So the sub does that when the mixer isn't plugged in, huh? That's good to know. Okay, there we go. There she is. She's on. Don't freaking turn me. Oh, listen to that. That means we're connected. Yep. Bang, folks. All right, so we got Andy's setup here. We got the computer up here. We got the mixer there. We got the Roland Studio Capture right there. He's got everything plugged in, and he's going to show us how his system works. Show us how you do it. The microphones go into the interface, go into the computer. It's very exciting stuff. Let's see if the computer will stay on while we're running all these <laughs> different programs. Look at that. There she is. Logic Pro X, guys. Same program I use. All right. Let's see what we're looking at. Previously selected interface isn't available. Uh-oh. That's because I was editing She's at home. She's right there. Wow. That sounds pretty cool. There you go. Can I stand? I can stand on this, right? What's, what is it? The, uh, the keyboard here. bench? Be careful. I love that. I got an electric kit right here. Nice. We got the... Do this. Nice. Yeah. A kit on a kit. A Roland SPDS. Oh yeah, that's a nice unit right there. No vocals yet. But there we go. We've hit the R button. He is recording all those. Let's see if that did anything. There it is. Yeah. Ooh, that snare verb. I like it's that. It's very compressed. Yeah, I'm the, yeah, I'm glad you like the verb, bro. It's really tough obviously to have this many things to hit, not hitting one another. So I just redid this snare because I wasn't really able to access this thing and it's such a cool little Latin drum. And I like having this thing up here. Wow, Ooh. it's coming through the vocal mic too. <laughs> the remote hi-hat has become, you know, my new favorite thing because it enables you to, well, it just gives you a hi-hat. Oh, you got another hi-hat down here. Oh, wow. And then this one, is kind of a closed hi-hat all the time, but it's also mini, of course, so. Not fully closed. We have um, three hi-hats. This one doesn't open and close, though, just sit. Sorry to everybody out there who feels like I shouldn't try all these symbols at the same time. <laughs> Very sorry you don't like such a rich, colorful palette to choose from that might admittedly aid in some distraction, but kind of makes it a lot of fun. <laughs> all right, glad we got that out of the way. There you have it, folks. <laughs> Too all many right. symbols! Sorry.
Can you tell us about that steel drum again? This thing over here is an LP street can, they call it, and it's an 18 inch. Some things just get inspired by a certain song. And for me, that was Muse. Their song, uh, darn it, I'm not gonna say which song title it is. I don't remember for sure. <laughs> but their drummer kind of does a thing where he, it's kind of a double kick type pattern because he plays open-handed with his left hand on a floor tom. It goes like this. I don't need that because I've always had a double kick pedal pretty much, but it's kind of like a, an acoustic 808, if you will, to me, which is also kind of the idea here. This Dang, one, brother. Yeah, they're, they're both muted properly, which is a Remo um, Muffle, M-U-F-F -F apostrophe L, I believe is the branding on it. <laughs> and what that does is it, it really, within an inch or two diameter of the, the batter head there, it chokes it and it kills all the high overtones and just gives you a nice Woo! low from that drum. You got a metronome over there too? Indeed I do, Boss uh, Dr. Beat 90. Dr. Beat 90, wow. I got a little tray here for my phone. Nice. I got uh, go. a sample pad and again, the auxiliary pad on the side. Yep. And uh, this mallet goes to a mini gong, but it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> but the mini gong isn't of much use up here, so I took it down. It was dangling from the rafters. Got the tambo over there. That was also a new addition. Again, just getting all this stuff stacked, yeah. just a pain in the butt. I got everything a, a drum, a, not everything a percussionist would ever need, but everything a drummer could ever need on their kit, pretty Dude, much. And I you think. got more kits. Well, You've got- What am I talking about? There's other stuff. That's a triggered mesh kit, so it's silent to the acoustic touch, okay. but it can be put through a PA. Oh, look at these cymbals. They got these holes in them, so they're not super loud. Sensor right there. Pretty cool tech. They're acoustic electric cymbals. They also have a pickup on them. And that goes to their special Ooh, drum module. Yeah, it up too. And what's this one? This is a, just, just a jazz pattern. kit. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's hear it. Oh, yeah, well, kind of. It, it could use something sitting a little on trashy. top. You can do this too to kind of quiet a little of that ring. <laughs> Never mind. Sounds like shit. Andy can charge his car from his studio. <laughs> So what other instruments can you record in the studio along with drums? As you see, we got the TSL 100 mic'd up there uh, yeah. for anybody who wants to come down and play on it. Freaking Marshall JCM 2000. Industry standard right there. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. It was modded. Yeah, it sounds really warm. And then you can record vocals. Keys right there. Keys. Bass right That's there. That's a big bass amp, dude. That Dang. thing's badass. This is some serious stuff. We got a Working Man's 4004. Never heard of it. SD SWR, though. That's yeah. definitely a known name in bass amps. And that, that thing's cool. It's got its own DI on it already. Or, it's, you know, direct out, I yep. suppose. Nice. So there's the studio, guys. Andy, what do you call this place? Animal Studios. <laughs> there you have it folks, Animal Studios. Got three drum sets in here, keyboard, guitar, bass, and of course, the full recording shebang. Yeah. <laughs>